as if a pandemic hadn't done enough to halt global trade. The Australian waterfront's doing the rest, ships idling at sea and a Prime Minister only too eager to unload. I mean, we cannot have the militant end of the union movement effectively engaging in a campaign of extortion. Thousands of containers, some with vital supplies inside, held up. In part, it's claimed, because wharfies are on a go slow for higher wages. There's close to a million people unemployed and I've got a 6% per annum wage claim being laid on me uh, when, when the average wage around here is approximately $160,000 a year. They're using COVID as industrial leverage and trying to take the high moral ground. The Maritime Union says 6% is an ambit claim, but it's long played hardball, although Patrick's is laying some tough markers itself. People offering to come here and work for, for $100,000 a year. If Patrick were to form a rival workforce, would you support such a move? Look, I'm not going to get into hypotheticals. But not without precedent. Patrick's locking out its union workforce 22 years ago in a failed bid to restructure its operations. Commonwealth should be playing a role in bringing the parties together to produce a constructive outcome. The Wharfy dispute will likely be resolved in the Fair Work Commission, but the strength of Scott Morrison's intervention suggests he's convinced there's little public tolerance for industrial confrontation during a national crisis. He's all about getting people back to work, as he hopes next week's budget will demonstrate. That includes encouraging those who've worked from home for months to return to the office. Commonwealth public servants, some 160,000 workers, to take the lead in repopulating city centres. It's time to get our CBDs humming again. When getting back to work means just that. Andrew Proben, ABC News, Canberra.